Look at that. Look at that. Opening screen. Look at that. Israel's most popular new talk show. <laughs> Hold on. You ready for this? Can they hear? It's Almost done. It's that was good. Hi, I'm Benji Lava. Welcome to the Chumus Minute. This is our first ever episode. I'm so excited to have. I hope they can. I don't even know if they can see me. We're so thrilled. Uh, we, we being me. No harm done if they come. No harm done. I don't even know if anyone's watching this. I've never done Facebook Live. I wanted to do more video. Um, and I thought, you know what, this is the time to do it. So this is Israel's hottest new weekly show. We're going to have guests talking about politics and culture and sports and anything you can imagine. And uh, please excuse our terribly high production value. But th this, thank you, Michael Lieberman, for the amazing theme song. If you couldn't hear it, that's going to go online later. Oh, by the way, our first guest ever, formerly editor of the Jerusalem Report and Jerusalem Post, the founding editor-in-chief of the Times of Israel, David Horowitz is with us today. We're going to bring him on in just a little bit. So if you have questions for David Horowitz, please, oh, i got to bring up Facebook. Let's see, let's see what this looks like here. If you have questions for him, please, go, oh my God, there we are. Leave them in the comments, and uh, I will do my best to uh, find them. If you have questions for David Horowitz about anything, let's say politics. <laughs> Where's the hummus? That's your first question. Where's the hummus? Where's the hummus? Hey, one patience, one. chaps. So I'm going to try to be in and out in under 10 minutes. I'm afraid of David Horowitz. <laughs> This is going better than I planned. So far, excellent. This is, yeah, I was really nervous about this. Okay, so good. So far, so, so send good. questions in for David Horowitz. We'll try to get to them. If you want to make sure I see it, you might even shoot me an email to Benji at BenjiLovett.com with hummus in the name, and then I'll be sure to see it. Let's move on to the headlines. Take it away, Ben. <laughs> I haven't practiced these at all. Okay. Is it Melania or Melania? Yeah, I don't know. Melania Trump is being created. If this were a real show, I'd have them memorized and deliver them a like a monologue, but I just wrote these five. Well, you have like a, a, like a telegram. I don't, yeah, I don't even have telegram. There's no staff here. Actually, we cannot even see what everyone else is saying. I know. We are actually in a worse position. This is more than fun anybody. than you thought it would be. It's about the level of fun that I thought it would be, Benji. I'm going to get to the headlines. <laughs> if you'd like to sponsor the Homeless Minute, please be in touch with me. If you have ideas about production, if you could only see what we're looking at on the television right now. I didn't plan if for that. If you have ideas about production, that would be good. Yeah. Ideas about We're going to have production. microphones. Melania Trump is being criticized for lifting large portions of an old speech given by First Lady Michelle Obama. Melania responded by telling the media that they can go to hell, which ironically she lifted from her husband's speech to the Constitution. There's a yeah, smile on there. Yeah, good, good. The audience is applauding. You can imagine the audience would be applauding. This is be if all the guests are as good as someone, I'll be very happy. Prime Minister Netanyahu lashed out at Hamas today after reading their recent comments praising Hitler and calling for the death of Jews. Upon further investigation, it turned out the BB had actually been reading the Republican National Committee's YouTube live stream yesterday. It was shut down. Did you hear the story? Yeah, it's on the Times of Israel. Sure. It's on the Times of Israel. I think we're ready to bring out our guest. <laughs> I'm kind of already on. Yes. Okay, but we'll, yeah, we'll like pretend that I'm coming in. You can do whatever you Imagine want. Imagine me walk in through the curtain. And I'm going to introduce you again, even though it's only been two minutes. Yeah. Um, all right, David Horwitz is our first guest, the founder of the Times of Israel .com. Um, David, how are you today? I'm good, Benji, and I'm enjoying every minute of this I'm new experiment. Sure they can see. Do you think they can see? What happens if I play? Oh, there we are! Oh my God! <laughs> it's just a It's like the, show, the scene in Spaceballs when they. I like the fact that I'm partially obscured by the computer screen. I like that. Uh, no, I could. So, David, when happens. I invited you to yeah. do this today, what was your first thought? <laughs> Uh, sure, Benji. And you know why? Because every year on your Matzmo, you write that lovely, expanding piece, and you slave over it all year. And I thought the least I can do is um, enable this fascinating experiment in new technology, right? And what did you really think? Okay, when I walked in, what did you think? And then I thought when you started setting up, and you got me, you basically to tell people the truth, it's like an iPhone on what looks like a wobbly, kind of, <laughs> a wobbly kind of robot some I don't know what the hell it's standing on there then I thought what have I got myself into yeah yeah well I I think the show's almost half over <laughs> good, good, good. So, let's get let's get to the um so uh David, let me ask you this um you know, there was already Jerusalem Post and RX and Ynet what was the motivation why do we need another English speaking uh news center just to, now we're having like a serious conversation 
But you want like content? Is that what it is? You're a valuable guest. Actually, you're a big draw. She won't know. My questions are on the floor. Hold on. <laughs> Why the need for another new What? Does Letterman like do that? Like help Letterman him? retires. He's... Yeah, I know, but you know, you know. James, I think he has two cards. James, what's his name? The English guy. James Corden. Yeah, does he like pop over and get his questions on it? Probably not. Probably has, probably has but he can only go up. He has people to do it. Um, because I thought the middle ground um, was open, and I, you know, I, I don't have, I don't, I don't think ideologically it's 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 unacceptable to have. Um, journalistic enterprises with a political agenda or a partisan agenda, I think that's entirely legitimate. But I, th I think Israel needed, needs uh, um, at least one source in English that is trying to be fair-minded. I mean, we're not perfect at all. Ah, uh, uh, don't tell yourself short well, yeah. Okay, we, we, but we strive for, for fair-mindedness, and I thought, I thought it was important to have that. that was it's, uh, wait, it's funny that you say that, because I wrote, I, I found a quote. Uh, you consider yourself a member of the confused middle ground of Israeli politics. What does that mean, confused middle ground? Look, you know, I think... Most of what we, I mean, we obsess about lots of things here in current affairs, but uh, you know, a great deal of, of our dilemmas revolve around the, the neighborhood generally and the Palestinians in particular. And I would, I don't think it's good for anybody for us to be running the lives of the Palestinians to the extent we do, which is not completely and not all of them, but we, we, we're very, very uh, um, inter, inter, intertangled there. I think if we can find a way to separate from the Palestinians, it's good for both of us. I want to keep Israel Jewish and democratic. On the other hand, the complexity of separation cannot be underestimated. You know, when you relinquish territory in this region, in this era, bad things tend to happen. And therefore, yes, I'd like to be able to separate from the Palestinians, but yes, I mistrust the Palestinian leadership, and I think that the people who may come, out, come after this person leadership might be even worse. You know, that's the complicated middle ground that Israel finds. Yeah, I sometimes, uh, I don't know if I'm, uh, I sometimes almost can't believe that not everyone is uh, in the middle, or maybe... I don't know if it's just wishy-washy, but I feel like it's such a complicated situation. How could you, you know? I don't think it's wishy-washy. In other words, I think the people who are unthinkingly uh, um, placed on, on, the, on, on either extreme, I think that's easier in a way. And I think if things were as simple as the absolutely certain people on yeah. either wing believe, well, if they were that simple, we'd have done them, because we're not a foolish nation. Like when Sadat came and said, said I want to make peace, it was not that complicated. Of course we should do the deal. So I actually think... The, the centrist, nuanced positions are, you know, they're not the wussy positions. They're the actual, life is complicated. Yeah. It's not so simple position. So, uh, and uh, it, it's funny, I, I, I had someone recently guess that I was, uh, I think people think that I'm anywhere from like, what? people cannot figure out where I am on the spectrum. A lot of people think I'm right wing, and a lot of people think I'm left wing. I mean, I guess I'm somewhere in the center, but um, I would love to have guests from all over the political spectrum. Maybe we'll have a debate. You know, I don't have any kind of agenda from this. Uh, yeah, it, when I'm selling myself because of my politics and I've got big branding problems, but, you know, I, uh, I don't know if you know everything on the internet is true, but, you know, I read people who think, you know, the Times of Israel is, is left-wing and it's lost its way. What do you want to say to those people? Someone who thinks Times of Israel is a left-wing publication. No, we have people who think the Times of Israel is, is a left-wing publication and people who think it's a right-wing publication. We have blogs that, that range across the spectrum, which I think is so positive for yeah. the mistake, where people are actually being exposed to a point of view that they disagree with. Our reporting is as, is as fair as we can make it. You know, we all have our biases and we all have our preconceptions. We try to be fair-minded. By the way, we heed, you know, constructive criticism and we don't heed destructive criticism, shall we say. I actually have a big problem. I read the Arabic version every day and I have a big problem with the slant. Yeah, yeah. The slant of the letters, like they, yeah. That's it. Ah! Ah! Are you available next week? Are you going to joke? Yeah, Are you my sidekick? It won't happen again. No. Okay, I think we're going to go to the questions. See, there's a problem here. It doesn't list all of them. I, somebody uh, wants there, to... There are questions, right? I did see... Uh, see I why, did are you, some, why are you so high? Because someone said this is blocking your face. <laughs> but it only shows on Facebook, it only shows four comments at a time. But I did see someone there say... Were some questions. There, was, there were different questions before they scrolled through. They just, somebody see, said, where's the hummus? Somebody yeah, someone said, said, what is your favorite kind of hummus? That was what they were asking. No, I have my family are very hummus specific. And if my daughter was here, she would give you her, 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 her preferred Jerusalem hummuses. Uh, there's hummus ben sira, which is not far away from here, which is you know, five minutes from the office. They're pretty good, but I, you know, there's there's lots of good hummus. And, what, and my nephew actually works for one of the hummus. I don't even want. I don't want to start endorsing or or, or, or dissing. If you want to be a sponsor, the hummus <laughs> minute, contact me. You know how to do it. We only have fifty nine people watching. What do you want in terms of? Yeah, but it's there forever now. What do you want in terms of sponsorship? What does that even mean? What do you want from? Maybe somebody get you know to give. You I don't know. Is it money? Is that what you want? Money. I really thought this. If you'd like to be an intern for the Homeless Minute, they could pay me, and I could, you know. Really, you want people to invite you to do stand-up comedy in the United States? Isn't that what you really want? 
I want that too. Okay, so you should tell people. Am I talking too loud? No, you should tell people. Uh, I don't know. We're quite a long way from the phone, so I think. Anyway. Yeah, I hope people can hear this. Uh, oh, we have a question from Lonnie Wilk. What are the metrics on Arab readership? Which countries read the most? Good question. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll say this uh, broadly speaking. We, we do Arabic and we do Persian. We do Chinese, French, and English, right? The Arabic and the Persian are, in a way, kind of mission-oriented. Traffic's not bad, and there's nobody else doing it. And I wanted a narrative, the fair-minded narrative of Israel to be available in those languages. The core of the site, in terms of traffic, is, is the English. The French is, is pretty healthy as well. The Chinese focuses on the high-tech and innovation. The core of the site, the big traffic on the site, and we, you know, we're pretty open about the numbers. We have 18 to 20 million page views in, a, in, a, in an average-ish month, and sort of three and a half to four million unique users in an average month. Overwhelmingly, that's, that's the English site. Wow. We're going to get better by, le by next week. I don't know how you're supposed to monitor the, the comments, and I'm supposed to talk for a guest. You need interns. So I know. Uh, one more question. My so buddy, Eitan, yeah, I don't even know how to say your last name. Should tie it? My buddy from WeWork wants to know, who's your favorite Israeli politician? Who do you respect the most? <laughs> Do you like to reveal that kind of thing? <laughs> if I answer that question, right? That, that's, can, you, can you imagine the consequences? Oh, he really... Can you imagine the consequences? Uh, but I will say this. I will say that, you know, going into politics, the responsibility of politics, and especially the most senior positions, you know, I'm saying, you know, this is a, a light-hearted thing, but to be the Prime Minister of Israel, for example, like, the, the, the consequences of what can seem to be a reasonable decision can be so radical, resonant, potentially catastrophic, that it amazes me that people aspire to high office. And, you know, I, I think by definition, anyone who wants to be Prime Minister of Israel probably shouldn't be allowed to be Prime Minister of Israel, because how can you possibly want to be Prime Minister? When it's, you know, well, we need that particular mix of arrogance and expertise in our leadership. And uh, I, I would not underestimate the burden that the most senior leaders of Israel, you know, labor under, whether we like what we're doing, whether we criticize their decisions. I mean, America, I understand, has some election process. Britain just changed its Prime Minister. Does. You know, you can elect really lousy leaders in most countries, it will not have existential con consequences. We can elect reasonable leaders here, and, and they can take decisions with, with existential uh, uh, results. That's a, that's a heavy uh, burden to carry. Hey, All right. Um, with the tone, no, no, kind of, I'm kind of took serious. Good times with the homeless. Well, one more question. Uh, we have many readers want to know, when are you going to start your print edition of Times of Israel? Is that right? You have many, many readers? Many people. Me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shmulek, uh, Shmulek wants to know. Listen, I love print journalism. One of the things, one of the reasons why the Times of Israel homepage works the way it does, where, where it's really a hierarchy. It's like you're remaking page one all the time because I want to show what matters more and larger pictures and bigger headlines on big, on more important stories and so on. But, but we are not going to do print unless I can find an economic justification. He's really answering the question. It. I've been asking him. Maybe it's a serious question, some of them. So I, don't hold your breath on a print edition, not because I'm ideologically opposed, quite the reverse. Although online, you get to I've written like 10,000 word pieces, which is really not a good idea, but I, I like to do that. I read can. those. <laughs> I'll test you on the authors. You can do that online, and you couldn't do that in print. Wonderful. Well, uh, we're going to bring our show to a close, as we do each and every week. Uh, <laughs> we have a gift for you. I have an autographed copy of uh, Now I Can Die in Peace with my favorite author, Bill Simmons. I'm going to give it to you, but you have to give it back. It's the only copy I have. So I'll have to work. I like to have this, and then you're going to give it back. Thank you so much. Anything you want to plug? Anything? Uh, no, just the Times of Israel, really. Which I think we've done quite effectively for the last 10 minutes. So this brings our first episode to an exciting conclusion. Come back next week when we have our next guest. I don't know who it's going to be. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, uh, oh, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll end with a song, our theme song. Thank you, Michael Lieberman, for the music. Isn't there like a food element to this? Oh, whole, Jesus! Whole I'm such a bad... Yes! We've got hummus! <laughs> I'm a bad host. <laughs> Open that up, I'm going to play the song, we'll be good to go. I'm opening the hummus, right, okay, good. Maybe we'll do that after the credits have rolled. It's the That's for you. Thank you, Benji, thank you so much. I would have forgotten thank the hummus. Yay, yeah, save. We'll see you all next week. It's delicious. <laughs> ah! How do I stop it?